Wouldn't it be nice if there were a magic bullet to get black kids into good high in good colleges? Wouldn't it be nice if there was some kind of switch we could flip that would undo 50 years of uh, uh, liberal indoctrination that black people are relentless victims of relentless white racism all the time everywhere that explains everything and wouldn't it be nice if we could undo the damage that has done well it would be but instead what we get is high schools like that school in Washington D.C. remember that school we did in Washington D.C. last year Baloo High School the principal promised at the beginning of the year that all of his children were going to go to college and at the end of the year, it's like it was a national celebration for Blue High School in Washington, D.C. Because sure enough, all those kids went to college. NPR, to its credit, to its heartache, to its heartbreak, to its internal shame, probably. They did a story on it afterwards saying, oh, yeah, no, this is a big hoax. It's a big fraud. The kids got into college with doctor transcripts. Uh, you know, they, every, everything about it was phony. Now we have another story like that out of the T.M. Landry Academy down in Louisiana. It doesn't seem to me as quite as bad as, um, uh, uh, as Blue. I mean, it, here's the crazy part of the story you're about to see about, a, you know, uh, first of all, the college is all about, this high school is all about getting black kids into college, pure and simple. But here's the thing. You can get somebody into a college that's, you know, and they know how to do it, which is a doctor, the transcript to show the kids have a much stronger academic record than they really do. And B, make sure when you tell your story and you're in your personal essay, make sure you turn the faucet on, get the violins rolling, remind everybody that you are, you too are a relentless victim of relentless white racism all the time, everywhere. That explains everything. And, you know, wouldn't, you know, you'd be a great addition to their campus. So that's the game they're playing down at TM Landry. But the weird thing about this school that we're going to see in a minute, a story from the New York Times, the weird thing about it is as, as, as bad as it is to turn this school into one college admission hoax, I still think the kids in that school are better than, they say, for example, the 16 black high schools in Baltimore where nobody reads over a third grade level. And violence mayhem and chaos are the orders of the day let me know a high school student in front of a laptop surrounded by classmates dressed in college gear a moment of suspense and then it was a scene repeated over and over again Students from one Louisiana private school opening acceptance letters from their dream colleges. The videos often went viral. This one, of a 16-year-old student getting accepted to Harvard, racked up over 8 million views. But there was more to the story. Students told us many of their college applications included false information provided by their school's administrators. And the cheers in these videos covered up an ugly reality of abuse and intimidation at TM Landry College Prep. Abusing emotionally, physically, we realized, okay, so, something's not right. Every, everything is wrong with TM Landry. 16-year-old Megan Malvo is a former student. There was this little kid, he was probably about seven or eight, and he was acting up in class. Mr. Mike, he had took the kid by the neck and picked them up and body slammed them on the table. Mr. Mike is Michael Landry. He and his wife Tracy founded the school. It costs up to $725 a month to attend and received national attention for its 100% college acceptance rate. In various TV interviews, they pitched a message of hope and hard work. We're changing society. We're giving hope. Go big or go home. The Landrys denied falsifying transcripts in college applications and any allegations of abuse. But they do maintain that physical punishments are doled out because they love their students and treat them like family. The Landrys told the story of young black kids from a working class community who overcame systemic barriers to achieve success. Doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter where you've been in life, you can do it. And the videos were crucial in promoting that message.
parents say they had no idea what was going on. All the videos, I was excited for all the kids because they're kids, little, little black kids like us. Can go to Harvard, Yale. I mean, the good talking he did made you realize, well, you kid needs to go to that school. If you want the best for your kid, you need to send them to T.M. Landry. You know, you speak to anybody in Louisiana, they're telling you. When the cameras were off, students say they were pitted against each other, interrogated and humiliated. Students say they were also physically punished. Sometimes they would be forced to kneel on rocks, rice, or hot concrete for hours. I remember the first time I was put on my knees was because uh, he gave me a test and I failed it. A New York Times investigation found that behind the scenes, the Landrys filled out transcripts incorrectly to reflect classes the kids say they never took and grades they never earned. My transcript was messed up because he messed up my birthday because apparently I was born the year my mom was. He put classes that I never even took, like chemistry. Students told the Times that the Landrys told them to lie on their college applications about growing up in households marked by poverty, crime, and drug addiction. If they refused, they say the Landrys threatened to do it for them. A look back reveals clues about Michael Landry's temperament, like in this recent pitch that became a passionate outburst. But this was a rare glimpse at his frightening tone. The Landry's produced a steady stream of promotional material, painting a positive picture of an unconventional school. TM Landry is a no-frills school. No classrooms, no walls, no books. Teachers without certifications. Classes with no teachers at all. After the acceptance videos started gaining traction yeah! in 2016, press from around the country started showing up at their door. Walking around campus, we saw that weird Landry style. Outsiders marveled at how the Landrys could make the impossible happen. So, okay, this is incredible. The results speak for themselves. They have figured oh, out Landry's. the secret sauce. They yeah. really have. Yeah. In media interviews, they called themselves a family. Family first. That pushed kids to their academic limits. They will make it. No is not an option. Failure is not an option. Former students and parents told us that for visits like these, students would be forced to spend days rehearsing what to say to reporters. I've learned to attend Harvard University. Harvard University. Stanford University. Oh, Brown. We have this trade book, which is like from MIT. So we just basically teach each other. For the high school students, there was a singular focus, practicing for the ACT. For younger kids, a loose and insufficient curriculum that has left many grade levels behind. When their methods were questioned, the Landrys were quick to dismiss any suspicions. Some of them are a little brainwashed. When it's a black kid and it's strictly education, something's wrong with that kid. The reason why I never said nothing was because I was scared. Because they were getting all these attentions from news channels. They were in articles. I was so brainwashed and I was thinking, he can't do no wrong. But... As you can see, since I'm sitting here, I was all wrong. Now, many in the TM Landry community say they feel swindled out of time, money, and ironically, an education. So you look at these kids. I mean, they're kids. Let's, they are kids. They're kids. I understand that. And these kids, with, you know, just the way they talk and the way they dress... They might have something going for them. They might have something in front of them they can actually grab onto and take them through life. But if you put somebody in a place where they don't belong, they're going to fail there. I mean, let's say, for example, the, somebody created a law that said Colin Flaherty must have a spot on any professional basketball team that he wants to go to. Okay, I'd say, hey, great, I'll, I'll go. How long would it... You could force them to hire me. You could force them to practice... You know, put me on the team. You could force them to make me to put them, make them put me in the game. Could you force me to be a good basketball player? No. How long would it take to figure out I didn't really belong there? How long did it take that I might have a reason to be on this earth, but it's not playing professional basketball? It would take less than one second. Please, sir. I want some more. 
so I wish these kids well. I mean, they want to, you know, at least, you know, I swear it's crazy. As bad as the school is, as bad as the, the fraud they're perpetrating on their students and on these colleges is, that's the game the colleges are telling all the kids to play. If you're black, we really want you. Just give me something. Just give me a reason to admit you. Just give me some sob story. Tell me how much your life sucks. Conform to my liberal attitude that black people are relentless victims of white racism and they cannot make it in this world without the assistance of a bunch of liberals on a college admissions board. That's the message. That's the game everybody's playing. Play it every day. And people like Michelle Obama, they get admitted into Princeton and they write this thesis, senior thesis at Princeton. You ought to, you know, if you ever read that, you ought to try to read it. I'm convinced nobody on this planet, including a professor who graded it, I'm convinced no one's ever read that thesis cover to cover because, as Christopher Hitchens said, it's not accurate to say you anyone's read it because it's written in a language that really hasn't been invented yet. That's paraphrasing. And so you, you send a Michelle Obama to Princeton University where she has no business being 100% affirmative action admission, what's her choices when she gets there? Is she going to study math, science, English? No, because once you get in those classes, at some point, you have to perform. You actually have to do some kind of work. So the choices are you, you study and fail, or you take the African-American Black Studies course and you get all A's, and, and what, you, what you're really majoring is, is black racial resentment. And you come out of college not being able to do a damn thing except show up and say, hey, do you guys have any, vol do you guys have any slots for relatively unqualified black people who wear suits and speak well? Yeah, you know, I know how to play the game. I'll come in, pay me a bunch of money. I'll try to stay out of the way while you guys actually do the engineering and the big building that... I'll pretend to understand, but I don't really have an aptitude for or an education for. Not everybody has an aptitude and an education for everything, you know. And pretending that they do, forcing people that they do, that's a guarantee for failure. And at some point, people who are force-fed into that system, into these school, high schools, into these colleges, at some, at some point, they're going to look back and say, man, I know it all sounded good, but... This didn't really do me any good. That's the point where lots of black kids get angry.